Assalamu alaikum and very good morning. Um, welcome to National Basic Ophthalmic Microphysical Workshop 2020. Um, some of you probably heard that uh, in the previous years, we had organized this workshop uh, to get here together with the wet lab. However, due to current COVID-19 pandemic, we had to convert this course into an online webinar. So even though without the wet lab, I still hope that all of you, um, this course will be uh, beneficial to all of you. So I'm starting uh, the course today with the first lecture, the operating microscope. So, um, what are the prerequisites for an ideal operating microscope? First, we have to have the uh, stereoscopic visualization. Number two, comparatively long working distance, a good illuminating system that can evenly illuminate all the parts of the surgical field. Uh, the microscope should be stable and also possibility to adapt to a wide range of procedures. So the ophthalmic uh, surgical microscope has three primary parts. First is the optical system. Number two is the illumination system. And the last one is the stand and suspension arm. Okay, if you look at the photo, um, this is basically to explain the basic principle of operating microscope. Basically, we need to have the two compact lens, the objective lens, and also the IP lens, which is separated to a certain, a certain distance, uh, more than the focal length of each lens. So working distance is actually the distance between the objective lens and the main focusing lens. With all these, a surgeon will be able to see a sharp, clear, and magnified image of, a patient, of the patient's eye. This is the overview of microscope. So you can see that that's the surgical microscope, the microscope base, and also the support and support uh, or suspension system. Okay, this is the other photo showing all the parts of the microscope. Okay, let's look at the optical system. In the optical system, we have the button for brightness control. We have the suspension system, either ceiling, wall, or floor for perfect integration into the treatment room. We have the viewing tube, uh, either inclined or tiltable tube to permit economic treatment, magnification changer also, eyepiece, objective lens, and also the coaxial illumination. Okay. So in the optical structure, we have all these IPs, beam splitter, magnification changer, illumination system, and also the lens. Okay, the eyepiece is actually the wide angle optics for a large field of view and excellent 3D impression. For the viewing tube, we have straight binocular tube or 45 degree inclined tube in which it has a fixed viewing angle and this is suitable for constant viewing direction. And we also have 180 degree tiltable tube in which it is tiltable by 180 degrees and we can adjust the position to get a good, uh, this is, can be adjust to get optimal position. Some or most of the microscope currently also has teaching binoculars. The teaching binoculars uh, often include a beam splitter and a second set of teaching binoculars so that two people can view the operation simultaneously. This is very good because uh, the teaching binoculars can be viewed by the assistant or your FACO teacher. We go to magnification changer in which we usually have five optimally max steps and can be changed manually. And the zoom is by our head foot pedal uh, in which we have continuously adjustable magnification. For the objective lens, the focal length of the objective lens corresponds approximately to the working distance in which the distance from the objective lens to the treatment area. Uh, objective lens with fixed focal length, usually either 170 or 200 millimeters. 
Now we go to illumination system. The light delivered to the optical system with a fiber optic wire to reduce the heat generation by the illumination system. And then the micros uh, microscope illuminator will transmit light to illuminate of the physical area. And any change made in the microscope magnification have no effect on the amount of light being projected from the microscope. This image showed um, how uh, when we use a coaxial illumination, the image will look clear and uh, sharp compared to lateral illumination. The light in the ophthalmic, uh, as I said earlier, the light in ophthalmic microscope is usually coaxial. What does it mean by coaxial? It means that the light follows back the exact same path as the image in the order to remove the shadowing. Okay. As in this photo, you can see that the light is delivered parallel to the viewing direction, thus it can illuminate even the tip area. Okay, some microscope also has combination of both coaxial and paraxial light sources to light up the physical field. The coaxial light are aligned uh, coaxial to the oculus, hence their names, and the paraxial light is just next to the part of the oculus. Usually, we set it a few degrees to the side. It is the balance of the coaxial and paraxial lighting that determines the best red reflect. I have a video here. Okay. Tonight, I will talk briefly about the magnification, depth of field, and resolution of operating microscope. Um, magnification means uh, magnification of an image is a relative value and has to do with the size of an image as projected onto the retina of the eye. Um, this is the formula, basically uh, focal length of the tube divided by focal length of the objective lens times the IP times the magnification value, and that's how we get the total magnification. And then depth of field. Depth of field is actually refers to an to area of an image that is in focus and extends in front of and behind the focus point. So the higher the, the magnification, the more shallow the marginal area of sharp focus and vice versa. If you look at the photo here, basically just to illustrate uh, the depth of field, the black line here at 15 degrees is critically sharp. This is where the lens is focused. The yellow area will appear acceptably sharp. The yellow area will represent the depth of field. And the third one is resolution. The resolution refers to the quality of the lens, uh, which enables it to deliver a perfectly clear image where intended. Resolution and depth of field are reciprocal of one another in that more resolution implies less depth of field in any one optical design. So if you can see the photo here, this photo shows uh, with low resolution and this one with high resolution, which is clearer. Okay. Next is the third part of the microscope, which is the stand and the suspension arm. Okay, The whole optical system here stands stable from the floor through the stand and the suspension arm. The optical system is suspended through the gimbal technique which made the system weightless, leading to no additional momentum to any direction when moved in any direction. The stand has wheels and can be moved around and can be fixed with brakes. And the stand also connected to foot pedal for controlling the focus and zoom. Okay, the foot pedal. Okay, I'm sure you all have experience using the foot pedal. Um, so the foot pedal we use, uh, we put our left foot on the foot pedal here at the foot rest. And then we have the XY joystick, we control the XY position of the scope. This part is the rocker switch in front of the foot rest. We move the scope up and down to make small changes in focus. The rocker switch behind the foot rest is to control the zoom, to zoom in and, and zoom out. And lastly, the light switch here to on, to switch on and off the light and also to change the intensity and size of the light. Okay, so. For the summary, what are the benefits of operating microscope? Basically, it gives 3D dimension view, variable focus and zoom, illumination system, clear and bright, <coughs> provide ergonomic working position, also give a picture and video documentation, sharing view of assistant and staff, improve safety of operation, and also reduce operation time. Okay, thank you very much. These are my references. Okay, and thank you. I have another video on operating microscope.